Hello artist, in today's video I'm going to open the set of Kuritake traditional Japanese watercolors. The set is called Art Nouveau and as you can see the colors are a little bit more muted. If you're new here, hi, welcome, my name is Irit. I'm an intuitive artist based in Austria, in Europe, and on my channel I share my artsy adventures, including my favorite supplies, reviews, etc. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you did it, give it a thumbs down so I know what you like to see. And of course, you are welcome to subscribe. If you're not familiar with traditional Japanese watercolors, I would characterize these as sort of a hybrid paint between traditional gouache, not to be confused with acrylic gouache, and watercolors. These are different, in my opinion, from traditional Western watercolors in the fact that they are really, really creamy and they just work really beautifully when used concentrated, opaque, in more of a creamy texture, uh, as opposed to watercolors, which I would say in general tend to be more watered down and then only used in that more creamy consistency in, let's say, specific stages of the process. These just behave a little bit differently. Uh, as you can see also, they come in these ginormous pans, uh, which is really nice when you're painting, but it does take a lot of space. So it's definitely something to keep in mind. If you are aware of these differences between these particular kinds of watercolors and regular or traditional Western watercolors, then you know what you're getting here. Uh, I think the quality is beautiful. Today I'm just going to swatch the set and then in another video I will paint with it. I'm going to show you the brushes that I like to use. It's not these particular ones, these, these are just ones I have on hand, but in general with this kind of formulation and gouache I prefer a flat brush because they hold less water and I want that creamy consistency. First color, this is called saffron yellow. Okay, I want you to get the best idea of the colors so you can decide if this set is right for you. The second color is green gold. The saffron yellow, it gives me very uh, nickel azo yellow kind of vibes. It's bright, but it still has a little bit of an earthiness to it. Really my kind of color. Green gold, same. Flax beige, this is a sort of, I would say, like a buff titanium color. And it's lovely. I have to say the colors here are beautiful. This is not... Uh, a palette I would start with because the colors are all already muted so you can't make them brighter you can only make them duller and so I wouldn't start with this palette uh, unless you only want to use these colors and you don't like any vibrant colors but if you like the color scheme then it's definitely something to consider so this is Ecru Beige yeah, actually, probably this one is, I would say, closer to buff titanium, and then this one is a little bit darker. Then we have pale pink, which is quite a anemic color, I have to say. Then we have coral pink, which is just so, so pretty. Then we have potter's pink, which I would say is kind of a creamy color. It, it's not, I, I wouldn't really compare it to the classic uh, Potter's Pink, which tends to be a bit more intense without this paleness to it. I'm guessing there's white in this, and it also is a granulating watercolor. Next is Vermilion, and this is lovely. This is quite an orangey Vermilion, but I think that's that's a, a very uh, popular color in Japan. Sorry if I don't have exactly the cultural reference, but there are a lot of temple-related 
structures that have that color, including a really, really famous one in Kyoto. This is alizarin crimson. That's the name. This is nothing like alizarin crimson. I would say this is more closer to a potter's pink. So the names are, you know, just some sort of impression of someone. Uh, mauve taupe. I would say that's a good name for this color. It's really pretty. Next we have Old Mauve. I think I don't even need to drop water in these. As you can see, the formula is very, very creamy. Old Mauve is a, a slightly muted purple. Then we have grayish blue, which I think is a good, yeah, it's like a good name for this color. Then we have Cobalt Turquoise Light. There's a beautiful row. This whole row has really lovely colors in it. I would say this is a little bit too blue for me, but it's a pretty color. Next we have Pale Aqua. This is a very, very light color. Next we have Cobalt Green. This one looks beautiful in the pan. Most of these are very similar to like swatched out. They're very similar to how they look in the pan because they are mostly more opaque. Next we have Billiard Green. This is a sort of like a Viridian-ish type of color. Then we have Shadow Green. Holbein has such a color, which I love. Let's see if, yeah, this is, this is quite similar, I would say, to the color I'm familiar with from Holbein, which is also a Japanese brand. You can see this is a dark, slightly muted green. Next is also a color that looks pretty. This is called P Green, P-E-A. Next we have Ivy Green. I am very particular about my greens. This one is probably like my least favorite, but mostly I don't like greens that come in basic sets. So I really appreciate these ones here, at least these two. This one is just okay for me because they are just a little bit more muted. Then we have green gray. A slightly more muted green. Next is a really, really pretty color. This is beige gray. I love kind of taupey grays. I'm lately much more into the warm grays than cool grays. Next color is yellow brown. Not very exciting. Then we have Mars Yellow, which I actually like. Let's see how it is. Yeah, it's a bit too bright for my liking. It's really, really bright. Seems to be a bit more on the transparent side. And then the last one we have is Venetian Red. Whoops. Which I would say is more brown than red. But there you go, probably these last three are not that appealing. But it, this is a really, really lovely and interesting color palette. I would say uh, like a few things that stand out for me is the vermilion and this Mars Yellow. They're really, really bright, but I'm trying to think of colors that I have seen as I was traveling in Japan uh, and just trying to think which colors were bright and I don't know if right now my brain is a little bit messing with me, but kind of the, the only colors that I remember that were really bright are the vermilion and like the golden colors. So we have here the Mars yellow and then the saffron yellow is also quite saturated color. And then the other ones are more muted. I think now what we should do, or I should do, is try and use this. And this is something I highly recommend that you do if you get a new supply. Swatch it, yes, of course, that's great. We all love that, but start using it immediately. If you put it aside, you might feel intimidated. You might feel like you're not sure what to do. So jump right in, start using it. 
If you want to see these paints in action, then make sure you come back in a few days to see the next video where I played around with this and I can tell you my first impressions of them. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye bye.